Uh, hi, everyone. Um, this, the title of this presentation is Giving Social Skills to Humanoid Robots. Um, and I will start to try to explore a little bit what we mean by social skills. And uh, then uh, I will dig a little bit deeper into one of the perhaps most fundamental social skills that we have as humans, that is to take turns in a conversation and then end the presentation with a little demo of what we are working on uh, in that direction for, with Furhat. So, uh, of course, we've had uh, robots for a couple of decades, industrial robots doing dangerous work. Uh, but what we're seeing now is, of course, uh, a big shift towards the robots that can interact with people. And in that sense, they are social robots uh, and interact socially. Uh, so here is uh, uh, an example uh, that came out uh, recently with a robot called Figure. Hey, Figure One, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Now, of course, this is uh, very impressive. It's a combination of large language models uh, with vision and with robot control. Um, but on the other hand, of course, you could argue how, how social is this interaction? So the robot doesn't, it's not very expressive. It doesn't have a face. Um, and perhaps this works well in, in a demo like this, but the question is how well it works uh, in an actual uh, setting where there might be multiple people interacting with the robot and who are not trained how to interact with the robot before. Um, so as humans, um, evolution has made us social. Uh, one very clear example, of course, is that our brains have developed special regions that uh, recognize faces, and uh, it's so eager to recognize faces that we tend to see them um, everywhere. And this is another example. So uh, humans are quite unique compared to other animals in the whiteness of the sclera. Um, and the theory is that this has evolved so that we can more easily read each other's gaze and infer the intentions uh, of other people and know where they are attending and so on. And this helps in a lot of situations uh, where we have to interact. So as I said, in many cases, uh, when human robot uh, interaction is explored, uh, the sort of you assume a sort of a very basic, simple scenario. Uh, but I think in many cases where we'll see human robot interaction, it's in much more complex scenarios, like in the video we see here, where there is a robot um, on a self-driving bus uh, acting as a host. So of course, in these real-world interactions, there are a lot of challenges that we have to address. So. The robot needs to know who is there, uh, who is talking now. Um, are, are they talking to each other or are they talking to the robot? Uh, who is about to speak next? Uh, and when should the robot speak and not speak? Uh, how can the robot read the user's attention and understanding and engagement based on the face and the voice of the user? Um, and how can the robot signal its own intentions uh, during the interactions? So, of course, all of these are uh, challenges and uh, there's going to be a lot of work in order to, to address them. Um, in this presentation, I want to focus a little bit, as I said in the beginning, on uh, one specific aspect, which is turn taking in interaction. Um, so, uh, in the video we saw before, uh, with a man talking to the robot, um, the turn taking worked quite well. And I think part of the reason for that, I mean, apart from the fact that uh, the response time is quite, uh, quite long. Uh, but of course, he knows how to talk to the robot. But as soon as you put the robot in the front of a person who doesn't know how to talk to a robot, uh, which we have done in many uh, experiments, um, you will see something like this. So this is an example of, a, of an uh, elderly woman talking to a robot probably for the first time in her life. But my favorite is probably broccoli. What about you? Yes, I like broccoli too. I use broccoli very often for a soup. And I like. Yes. And I like to. It's a great vegetable to use in cooking. Yes. Thanks I for like sharing that with me. I like to cook it in 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 steam. It's better to cook it in steam. 
Do you do you yes. use? Do you? It's a great way to cook broccoli. Oh, thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> So you can see here that the turn tacking doesn't really work. Um, and it's a little bit like meeting someone in the street where you don't know which side to pass each other. Uh, and there is confusion and so on. Um, so the reason for this illustration here is um, that uh, we typically do it this way. The user might say, as in this example, I use broccoli very open, often for soup. Uh, we're waiting for some amount of silence for the system to to try to respond, uh, and then you need to process. You might have a large language model and a speech synthesizer, and then finally you might be able to respond. But in that window, of course, maybe uh, the user uh, starts to continue the utterance, uh, maybe because they weren't finished or because they come to think about something else they wanted to say or they didn't understand that the robot was about to, to answer them. Uh, so you get these kind of problems that we saw in the video. Now, there's a lot of work on reducing latency in, uh, in these systems. Uh, we saw uh, an impressive demo from OpenAI uh, a few weeks ago on uh, very fast response times. Um, so you can do that, of course, and, and then create faster response time. But it's important to understand that for turn-taking, reduce latency is not uh, the only thing. So um, if the user makes a pause like this, could you play? Um, and the system tries to answer as quickly as possible, uh, you will get uh, run into these kind of, of situations. Another issue is, of course, if you allow the user to, to interrupt the robot, it's, it's quite hard to know when are they trying to interrupt or when are they may perhaps just doing some kind of collaborative speech like, like a back channel or something. So in this case, if the system says, so I have this trip that goes from Stockholm on Sunday, it will be a thousand crowns, and the user might say, mm-hmm, and then respond. Uh, in another scenario, maybe the user wants to immediately ask a question, uh, during, like, what does it cost? And then the system should be able to tell the difference here. Uh, and that's actually quite, quite challenging. Uh, so what we really need is a, um, a turn-taking model um, that allows the system to, to uh, respond fast. Uh, of course, latency is important, but also know when to not respond. Uh, and it should allow for interruptions. Uh, but not be interrupted by collaborative speech like back channels and be able to give back channels at the, uh, to the user at the right places. And of course, as humans, we use uh, a lot of different signals to coordinate this. We have signals in the voice. We are using intonation, intensity. Uh, we talked about gaze, facial expressions, uh, and so on. Um, and all this has to be taken into account by the model. Um, and one turn-taking model that we have been investigating called uh, voice activity projection. And the idea is simply to train a model on a lot of human conversations to predict the next two seconds of that conversation. Uh, so let's take an example here just for illustrative purposes from the movie Her, where uh, we have uh, this person talking to his assistant. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well. Uh, now at this point, we might wonder what does the next two seconds looks like? Who will be the dominant speaker? Uh, and the, below that, you can see the prediction of a, 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 from the model, and it predicts that yellow will be the dominant speaker with some probability. So we can see what happens. How's everything with you? And it's true. Yellow was the dominant speaker. Uh, uh, the blue didn't take the turn here. Uh, so the prediction was correct. That's fine. So what about the next two seconds? Uh, the model seems to predict that blue will dominate here now, the, that the turn will shift to blue. Pretty good, actually. The prediction was correct here again. Now, in the next two seconds, uh, the model seems to predict that yellow will dominate. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Which, in this case, was not correct, actually. So this way, of course, we train the model, and we learn the model how to do these predictions. Uh, and if we do this well, of course, this model is extremely useful for, for, uh, for the system because it means that the robot can know uh, when is the user likely to speak, when is it appropriate to speak, etc. Uh, so let's now look at the demonstration where we put this model into the robot. So let's do a demonstration where uh, we are having a uh, customer coming back to the store and I'm practicing how to handle uh, customers uh, by talking to a sort of virtual customer here. Um, I need to speak to a manager immediately. Oh, what happened? The sole of these shoes came off after just two months oh. of use. 
I'm so sorry to hear that. Can you tell me a bit more why it happened? I don't know why they would fall apart so quickly. No. I didn't even wear them that often. No, sure. Uh, so, do you have your receipt with you? No, I don't have the receipt on me, but I'm pretty sure I bought them here and I have the credit card statement to prove it. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but it's actually company policy that, that you need um, to bring your uh, receipt with you. Uh, could, could you come back later, perhaps? Fine, I'll come back with the receipt, but I want my money back, not a new pair of shoes. Okay, we'll see what we can do about that, um, and have a great day. I'll be back later, and I expect a full refund. Okay, um, I hope this video showed how the model can be used to better understand uh, for the robot when the user is trying to interrupt or when the user is giving some supportive feedback. Uh, etc. and be able to have pretty fast response time while not interrupting the robot at the same time. Uh, so with that I conclude this presentation and thank you very much for listening.